Good morning, trust you well today. Um, I have been looking at Psalm 34 again. Psalm 34 is one of my favorite, all time favorites. But then as I say that, I think I like Psalm 23 and then I like Psalm 103. So I've got too many. So for now, let's start by looking at Psalm 34. So encouraging. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. God doesn't just hear when you seek him. He delivered me from all my fears. <laughs> they looked to him. This is verse 5. I want to look at this a little bit. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. Psalm 34 verse 5. And that speaks to me so much. And I've spoken about it so much. <laughs> but that word ashamed is the shame, the reproach the sense of being uh, confounded, humiliated, embarrassed. When we look to him, something changes. Because what happens is when we seek God and we find him, because it says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all our fears. How does God deliver us from all our fears? When we seek him, we find out that he has heard us and we find him in the word and he speaks to us by the Spirit. And then something happens. You know, when somebody's embarrassed, they, they go red in the face. When someone is feeling confused, they have a certain expression on their face. When we seek God and we find him, when we know that he's heard us, the deliverance comes when we realize that he does not want us to live in shame. He doesn't want us to live in regret over past mistakes. He doesn't want us to live in the remembrance of past sin. He doesn't even want us to live in a place where we're always beating ourselves up, trying to gain acceptance or win him over by how much we can beat ourselves up and feel sorry for ourselves. And we feel so dejected and discouraged because of past sins when he's already forgiven them. So if you're living in shame, it means there's confusion. It means to be confounded or confused. And a lot of believers live in a place of shame because they don't feel worthy enough to go to God and seek him and know that he will hear them and deliver them. It's like a cycle. The devil keeps him in that place. And there's something about people who have found God, even in their weakest place, they turn to God, their weakest point, their most vulnerable um, place in their lives. And they find God. And, and they, they see that when they look to him, they, they, it says, they look to him and were radiant. And something about their faces, their countenance changed. They were not ashamed anymore. That's why it's so easy to, go, to say, I will bless the Lord at all times. And it's not a religious thing. You know, people say, oh, I bless the Lord, I praise his name, hallelujah. But it's, it's, like, it's just a thing they say. But when you've really found God as the one who forgives, as the God who is gracious, as the one who looks at you and he sees you in Christ, and, and the price that Jesus paid, part of the deliverance is you no longer live in shame. So to be confused and confounded means you don't know the will of God for your life. That is going to make somebody's countenance look down and discouraged. But if you know God's will for your life is that you will prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. He wants your soul to prosper, um, that you will have good relationships, that he wants to meet your needs, material needs, financial needs, emotional needs. He wants to restore things in your life. So when you come into the kingdom and you look at Psalm 34, our trust in God, our faith in God brings us to a place knowing that he hears us and delivers us. And his plan for us is that we do not walk in shame. <laughs> then uh, it goes on, uh, it says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He wants you to experience and encounter his character that he is good. 
Um, I want to go to, no, let me read this first. Verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. That's you. His eyes are on you and his ears are open to their cry. Go to Exodus 33 in verse from verse 12 onwards, um, Moses is saying to the Lord, you say to me, bring up this people. You haven't told me who's going with me yet. And then God said in verse 14 of Exodus 33, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. There's something about people who walk with a revelation of the presence of God upon us. The presence of God is with you wherever you go. The presence of God upon you can be seen. And the people who live with that revelation live from a place of rest. I'm not saying there are no battles. Even in the battle, there's a, the presence of God is with me. God promised to be with me. He said he would never leave me nor forsake me. So that it's like people who are ashamed, still living in shame, haven't received the revelation that God is for them and not against them. And their sin has been dealt with. If we don't realize that God's presence still goes with us today, wherever we go, we will not live from a place of rest because we will be doing things to try and get God to show up <laughs> instead of living from the place where he is already here. And also back to Psalm 34, he inhabits the praises of his people. So if we do the Psalm 34 thing, your praise will continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. That's an invitation for the presence of God to manifest wherever you are. So God, so Moses says to God, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. For th how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us? So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing that you've spoken. One way that separates us from people out there in the world is the, the presence of God on our lives. That people can see there's something different about you. And it's not how, how smiley you are or you pretend to have it all together. It's that even in the middle of a battle, you're living at rest. Even knowing that there's warfare going on around you, you're living from a place of rest because you believe, you've chosen to believe that God's presence goes with you wherever you are. You've chosen to believe that you no longer have to live in humiliation, embarrassment, confusion, or being confounded. And to be confounded means you are in a mess and you do not know what to do, which way to turn and what to say and what to think. We are not called to live that way. We are called to live out of rest because of the presence of God, to hear his voice and to know that he looks upon us with grace and kindness and mercy and forgiveness. So have a fantastic day today.